Uganda's two new Bombardier flights, UR-474 and UR-470, are on their way to Uganda after leaving their manufacturer's base in Canada earlier on Saturday. The two CRJ-900 planes are expected to land in Entebbe at 3.30 p.m. The two will bring to four the total number of Bombardiers that Uganda Airlines will have for its regional services. Now, the crew for the third and fourth aircraft being delivered to Uganda Airlines includes Captain Emmanuel Muteri, Captain Charles Karaban Ka Karabarinde, yes, beg your pardon, Captain Stephen Ariong and Michael Kalisa. Now, the planes are registered as 5XKDP, that's Kidepo National Park, and 5XKNP, that's Kabalenga National Park. Now, these planes represent business expansions for Uganda Airlines, but uh, what does this acquisition actually mean for Uganda and our tourism industry, of course? the economy alike now of course in studios with us we do have this conversation and uh, we are joined by an economist a guru in the field uh, mr ramadan gobi thank you so much for making time and welcome to morning at ntv pleasure morning mr ramadan right. morning to you first of all Pleasure. before we get into this discussion let me ask you something what kind of discussion are you having with your students with regards to uganda airlines region uganda airlines yes it has been a long conversation mm -hmm. for quite a time but uh, now we are zeroing on how do we make it work mm. um, the chances which this airline has to to, to actually uh, take some market share of the the other regional you know airlines and uh, most importantly the opportunities that it could present mm -hmm. to the economy yes. of uganda because mm. there are a number of opportunities mm -hmm. that could come especially uh, given that they have now adopted a model of first actualizing their entry into this regional market, which to us, I think, is a very strategic model. For right. Them. I yeah. remember when we had this news coming to the fore that, uh, yeah. you know, the government is planning on, you know, reviving the Uganda Airlines. Yeah. We hosted you here, yeah. and uh, you were quite, you know, skeptical about the same, yeah. especially, and I remember your take-home point was that if this time round, this airlines our baby is to work yeah. we ought to have external management and yeah. government of ought to put its hand off it yeah. um, uh, do you still stand by the same point and what's uh, your review with regards to um, how the operations have been since mm. uh, it was revived what actually uh, I believe in and I still do believe in very strongly is that what will make Uganda Airlines work is the management of the airline. The business could be uh, good, but if uh, we do it through the usual, you know, government bureaucracy and other uh, challenges we do have in Uganda, then it will be very difficult. But uh, so far, quite so good, mm -hmm. because I've seen some um, uh, semblance of independence given to the management team. Mm -hmm. They are doing, they're making independent decisions. Mm -hmm. Politicians ended that, you know, making the fanfare of the airline, you know, this is an NRM achievement, mm -hmm. and that's good. Let them step there. But when it comes to how the airline is, is land, let it be mm -hmm. uh, purely business and professional management mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't want to hear that, uh, you know, some minister X or MPY, mm -hmm. they are giving memos to this airline. To, 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 for example, fly their relatives or fly themselves without paying and stuff. Right. And most importantly, I've seen now that um, government is determined to use industrial policy to have the airline work. Mm. I saw the uh, instruction by directive by the president to ensure that all uh, government people fly by Uganda Airlines. Yeah. And already in the budget, when I look in it, uh -huh. there are about 198 billion shillings mm -hmm. for foreign travel, right. you know, travel abroad. If this could uh, go to the airline, at least half of it, then it will be a first year, a very good first year for them. Well, right. Mr. Ramadan, uh, you did hint on the opportunities that uh, we could get from this uh, airlines resuming, mm -hmm. and we have two new CRJ 900s coming in today yeah. at around three. Now, what does this acquisition mean to our economy? I think uh, first it means that uh, they are living to the promise which they made mm -hmm. that they were going to acquire more, you know, re, uh, uh, airline. I mean, aircrafts mm -hmm. for the region, and the, you know these bombardiers they are acquiring they are small in size yes. and fit very well in the model 
of uh, applying the region market mm -hmm. because this market is not so big and uh, usually for some of us who are flying frequently in the region you see that whenever they bring a big plane <laughs> you are in trouble they have very few people in it right. but small ones always fill up and they, and they go so mm -hmm. i think this is good for them and uh, for the economy uh, uh, the biggest boost is going to be on tourism mm. uh, because you know tourists have been having a hard time getting to Entebbe. Mm. Usually these airlines when they come in they stop in their destinations, mm -hmm. they, they first stop over there and uh, since we share almost the same tourism attractions, Frola and Fauna and other attractions, they don't see any reason why they should come you know, and right. spend more uh, coming to Uganda, but now with our own airline, mm -hmm. we could easily now bring in especially regional uh, tourists. Direct to flights from right. maybe Direct London from straight to Entebbe, maybe Dubai straight to Entebbe. Oh, but yeah. then there is also the issue of direct flights maybe from Entebbe to Chidepo yeah, to link exactly. the tourists. Uh, how, how viable is, is that idea? C can it be achieved? Actually, it is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, moving within Uganda has been a nightmare True. sometimes for tourists. Uh, our infrastructure is not the best. Mm -hmm. um, also, it takes a lot of time with, the, you know, these traffic jams and so on coming from Entebbe. Then you come to Kampala. Then you get into some uh, company clearing and forwarding, mm -hmm. which are going to take you somewhere. But now, from Entebbe, you fly in and... Uh, you enter into a small jet and you go to Chidepo right. or you go to Matson Falls, wherever, it's going to be quite good. Okay. Quite All good. right. Mr. Gobi, you know, they always um, say that uh, the numbers never lie. Yeah. And um, it was estimated that for, for this particular first year of operations for Uganda Airlines, uh, they would need about 258 billion Uganda shillings mm. with regards to operations for the first year. Yeah. Um, with regards to your views as an economist and you interacting with the airline and how so far it's operating mm. um do you think they're going to um still remain within the same budget or um, we're going to see a scenario where it just happens even in business yeah. so that we, whatever business whenever yeah. you're, you're setting ground or starting operations yeah. um the costs are always up there do you think we're going to remain uh, or the uganda airlines will manage to remain within this particular threshold of a 258 b within the first year i think we should really allow them some flexibility the assumption is upon which some of those projections were made have since changed. Mm. First of all, the timing itself changed. Uh, the, the, these airlines were, I mean, the, the aircrafts were supposed to come in a bit earlier right. than that, and then were delivered. Uh, the cost implications there change. You remember they were grounded at Entebbe for quite a long time, Correct. Uh, almost two months. That also has to be factored in. And now, so many other factors. So I, I don't think that um, uh, they are still on budget and time and plan. Some few things will have to change. But that's allowable. You so know, you're as seeing long the cost as, going higher? Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. You know, um, Uganda's cost implications are always on the account of our macroeconomic indicators. Mm -hmm. Correct. When you look at interest rates, you look at exchange rates. And you know, remember that in most cases, these airlines have to pay everything in dollars. Mm -hmm. And yet when they are, you know, for example, ticketing here, getting local procurement, it is Uganda shillings. Mm -hmm. So then they have to convert. And that involves some exchange risk. Mm -hmm. So they have to factor in some premium. And all of that has implications on their costs. But to me, that's not the main challenge Uganda airlines mm -hmm. What is the main challenge? be worried mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. The main challenge should be diversion from their business model. Okay. Uh, b because of political pressures. But the good thing is, as I've said so far, the politicians have stayed away. Mm -hmm. They appointed a good board, a board which is quite uh, diverse. Mm -hmm. It has some good business practitioners. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, although it is chaired by a former politician, it's also an independent-minded guy right. whom I know. So. Uh, they are scored mm -hmm. because what kills business in Uganda especially is actually governance, mm -hmm. corporate governance, mm -hmm. who's in charge. And I think with Uganda Airlines, the, 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 the kind of yes. management and board is good. Mr. Ramadan, besides structural management problems, what are some of the other challenges that might incapacitate Uganda Airlines? Other challenges, of course, will be the usual 
business challenges, mm -hmm. uh, market expectations. They are quite different. Like uh, we said in our first conversation, the airline business in this region is very volatile. Because one, there are now so many airlines, you know, every country has mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they, they are locking in their own also people because in Kenya they are telling them you must fly Kechu. In Rwanda they are telling them you must fly uh, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Ethiopia they of course f are flying their own and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Tanzania has had the, some challenges recently mm -hmm. with the, some of their aircrafts getting impounded in South African stuff. Mm -hmm. But they are all locking in their own. Uh, so that means we are going to compete so stiffly, yes. especially when it comes to um, getting government mm -hmm. money from different countries. And you remember, mm -hmm. in this region, actually, when you look very closely, it's mainly the government people who are flying around Indeed. Okay. Yes. the region, attending meetings, attending conferences, and so on. Business people, they don't fly in the region so much. Mm -hmm. They are flying, you know, in the international, going to Emirates, are going to to Europe, mm -hmm. uh, but mainly in the east. Right. They are flying a lot, and okay. we haven't mm -hmm. yet launched there. In mm -hmm. the region, it's mainly government people. So the challenge there is co the cost implications. Mm -hmm. okay. I think government should be determined now to subsidize this airline for the first couple of years. What do you mean? They are going to use tax revenue to give them some money mm -hmm. to break even. Or, or else they will not be able to, to, to keep these... Yeah. You know, what bad does that mean the for air. the economy, sir? I know. We, we have discussed this matter <laughs> before. We have yes. discussed them. Um, this is time for, for really uh, supporting this national cause. Now that a decision was made, mm -hmm. the airlines were put in the air. We must uh, sustain these aircrafts there. Mm -hmm. uh, because they were, the, 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 the fact is, we are not going to have full boards. Mm -hmm. And when you do not have that, the cost implications, we'll they are higher. massive in aviation. Do you think now that, you know, government has this particular, you know, goodwill, um, of course, uh, the president saying that 190 billion yeah. um, has already been put aside in terms of, you know, travel costs for, you know, the delegates in the yeah. region. Yeah. Um, do you think that if implemented well, would somewhat, you know, give us a soft landing with regards to just balancing out the numbers? And do you think it actually will be implemented? Yeah, that's the question. Will it be implemented? Because <laughs> yes. that it's one thing I've seen. So many presidential directives, so many you know plans of government which are very good, but they don't get implemented. Our hope is that uh, this time government will be able to enforce mm -hmm. this. Because I know already there are government people who are flying other airlines. Right. I know this for sure. I found one recently <laughs> on, on one and I asked, hey, what happened? I, I, I thought you were supposed to be... And because even myself, I wanted to fly Uganda airline, but I was locked in by another person who had invited me <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. in their own airline. And I find their government people flying with that airline, not Uganda airline. And I think this is what, where it will have to be a decisive uh, kind of uh, action by government mm -hmm. to ensure that all of this money is locked in. If you want to fly out, especially in where Uganda airline is going, you must use it. Okay. Mr. Ramadan, the, the other challenge right now is the issue of terrorism in Africa and beyond. Yeah. How ready is our, how, how big is the, how big of a threat is the Al-Shabaab uh, problem right there? And how ready is Uganda Airlines to deal with this problem? I don't want to speculate. Yes. But the fact is, we have, as a region, dealt decisively mm -hmm. with the terrorism. Um, one area where they don't compromise anything called security mm -hmm. is aviation. Indeed. At the airports there, whether you are president or who or who, the checks are thorough. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very satisfied that uh, this wouldn't be a very big challenge. If we are going to Mogadishu now, and you know, uh, Ali Shabab is, uh, is almost gone. They, they are in the periphery of... Uh, of Somalia mm -hmm. trying to survive also. I don't think they have capacity to mm -hmm. cause any problem. So we are good to go? We are. All also. Right. Mr. Gobi, um, I know you've flown Uganda Airlines, have you? Not yet. Hey, I okay. wanted the two, but I failed. Well, I <laughs> <Twice>. have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have. And uh, the experience uh, in flight 
is amazing. I need to give it up to them, especially with the service and yeah. uh, the comfort. The yeah. aircraft is amazing. No, Bombardier is a very good one. Correct. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, That's when we got it right. Yeah. But in terms of the system and the process from yeah. A to Z, especially yeah. with the ticketing bit, yeah. it's still brick and mortar. Yeah. I remember um, there, you know, um, employees, especially at the ticketing point, were, were really trying hard to make sure that uh, they you know, write down your names onto, on, onto the boarding pass. Yeah. You know, it's brick and mortar, writing with a pen, yeah. you know, onto your boarding pass. Yeah. It's, it, it, and then, of course, with that particular factor, then comes in the time factor. Yeah. And, you know, with the airlines, especially yeah. at that boarding pass bit, yeah. it's just, you know, a matter of seconds, so to speak, yeah. and um, ensuring that we get it right with, the, with regards to the promise we're giving our clientele that, hey, our flights will never delay. And, of course, I'll give it up to them. On that particular day, there were no delays. But the worry is, on this brick and motor process especially yeah. when you think of a flight where it's fully packed or fully booked yeah. uh, what will this mean for us especially we're just gaining trust in the a, region it was just a, the beginning of, of a journey you mm. know usually beginnings are difficult I don't I want to give them you know benefit yes. of doubt yeah but uh, there are certain things which are not compromised in this industry. Yeah. And uh, like you were commenting, so many other people wouldn't want to be get inconvenienced, you know, waiting there for you to first uh, uh, saying their names again and again. Please, you, you, you spell it for me and stuff like that. Those don't work there. But uh, I think they are working on their system. I don't know why they were not ready by the time they, they because they have ample time to get ready. These are the things we have been discussing. Management in Africa is the biggest challenge. Would you say this is, a, is as a result of uh, maybe inadequate financing in that step? I because you would think, think so. that this that's ought to be a money. priority. That's not money. What that, is it then? That, that, that's some weaknesses we do have. You might find uh, someone who's supposed to procure some th of these uh, boarding passes and print them, uh, the machine which is supposed to... Right. He's doing other things which he thinks are more important. Mm. Uh, he's saying that one, you know, taking things for granted. Mm. And uh, I, I, I heard those comments, but I think later they improved. I saw them uh, having well, you know, uh, processed uh, boarding passes and so on. Mm. Uh, but it's not unique to Uganda Airlines. I've also had my name, you know, written several times <laughs> on, on boarding passes by Before, other right. airlines. Even in Johannesburg, mm. one time we were uh, by South Africa. Any implications with this um, kind of lethargy, mm. if we can call it that? I, of course, I know that uh, beyond the region, for us, we can tolerate in yes. Africa. We can say, oh no. This is They're our just country. Starting. Yeah. Yeah. starting. Yeah. There is another one who doesn't. Especially people who pay their money mm. to actually fly around, you know, tourists mm. and so they, they are impatient right. in, with the, uh, this kind of. Uh, uh, if you are not efficient, you know, airlines needs ex efficiency, as we call it in economics. Right. You see how they, I think some of your fans of Formula One, mm -hmm. the way those guys hand a car in the split second right, right. Mm -hmm. they have changed everything and the car is back on the track within seconds that's how, yeah, that's how <laughs> so airlines should be right? mr ramadan well it looks like these airlines will be looking at regional flights yeah now if, for example ethiopian airlines was built on the back of uh, domestic aviation yeah. now in uganda here who's going to fly people going to arua hoima karamoja etc I know that uh, there has been a conversation by so many people that why don't we get domestic you mm -hmm. know, flights yes. uh, quite prioritized. I don't think it's a good idea. Mm. I don't think there are many Ugandans who would fly. You don't think around. it will boost domestic tourism? I know that uh, tourism, yes. There are already some actually f uh, flights which mm -hmm. are uh, going in the region, but you find that uh, people are not using them mm -hmm. as frequently as people thought. Because now we remember that roads have improved in Uganda. Mm -hmm. In the 90s and whatever, we had very poor roads. For you to, f to, to travel from here to Fort Porto, mm -hmm. you could take three days. Now within a few hours you are there. Because of that improvement of roads, mm -hmm. people have always to, 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 to kind of think the cost implication and the trade-offs. Mm -hmm. If I drive, how much do I, am I likely to save? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know... Uh, these days, Uganda is, is easy to move around mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, 
road connection mm -hmm. to these main towns, right. which used to be very far. Yes. Even Karamoja now is very near mm -hmm. to, to many people. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to Arua, now people are doing four, five hours there in Arua. So for you to come in and you bring in the domestic flights, especially with our low incomes, mm -hmm. how many people are you going to fly mm -hmm. in that you know, plane? Mm -hmm. And maybe they should bring back those folk, they used to call them folk what? The, the folk has, the, these small planes which mm -hmm. even wind could blow in a certain direction. <laughs> and, and the certain government the maybe reduce are. the fares to increase the number of people subscribing to these flights locally. Yeah, you know, they have very limited flexibility in mm -hmm. the pricing. Mm -hmm. These prices of uh, airlines, they are almost oligopolistic. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you try to reduce the price, you face an inelastic demand curve. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you are not going to crowd in people who are not used to an airline simply by price differences. Yes. Right. There are certain things which people don't do. Mm -hmm. They are religious customers of certain entities. Mm -hmm. If somebody is flying a ketchup, because mm -hmm. maybe he was locked in by his government in mm -hmm. Kenya, or another one is a businessman who was a longer term relationship with the Ketchu. Mm -hmm. There is no way you are going to attract them simply because you have reduced the price. Mm -hmm. So you better price according to the market mm -hmm. indications mm -hmm. and, the, and, and you compete on other things. So oh, nice. if, if, the, if the airlines are too expensive and we can't pull in the people that we need, so how best can we promote domestic tourism in Uganda to ensure that even our people get to enjoy their country because as it is, it's the foreigners that get to enjoy Uganda and the people here, as you mentioned, the money issue and everything, yeah. uh, transportation from one point to another is, is very difficult. So how best can we... Tourism is an income thing, you know. Tourism in Uganda. There is a, what we call income elasticity of demand. Yes. Mm -hmm. The more incomes increase, the more people demand things like a tourism mm -hmm. and the vice versa. Right. People with low incomes don't see any reason why even they should go and see how snakes, you know, walk or how yeah. birds fly. It's not to they have the need other, for it, right. Yeah, they have other physiological needs mm. to cater for. Mm. So however much you'd want to, to, to milk a cow without milk, mm. you'll not get it. Mm. So we should better, I know in this country we have overplayed the tourism yes. song. Yes. We think it is the most important sector which you should, I know it's a very important sector for the economy mm. in terms of bringing foreign exchange, and the foreigners will come. Okay. But when it comes to Uganda, I think for Ugandans, we need to find other ways of making them productive, mm -hmm. get incomes, then they will automatically start to demand for these services we right. to them too. Mr. Gobi, I want us to look at the economy and how it's performing currently. Of course, today as we were doing the newspaper review in the Daily Monitor, yeah. um, a new development now, the World Bank has yeah. moved on to uphold the freeze on budgeting yeah. and uh, budget finding, of course, uh, on the Ugandan budget, yeah. uh, especially coming at a point whereby the government is still st trying to implement the 2019-2020, you know, our financial year kind yeah. of budget that was read out. Now... We do know that this aircraft, in totality, two are already in, two are coming today. We'll be expecting two in the near future. In yeah. total, six. That's the plan. And um, the estimated cost of all these six aircraft is uh, 2.6 or 2.7, there about trillion Uganda trillion shillings. shillings. Mm -hmm. um, with with the with the space that we are in, the economy currently of Uganda, um, do you think? this is achievable, especially knowing that these are monies yeah, <laughs> that uh, are still coming from the same coffers, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, how will that be balanced out in terms of a fine? We also know that the costs are high on this side. The first year is expected to spend, uh, in terms of operations for mm -hmm. Uganda Airlines, 258 billion mm -hmm. Uganda shillings. Mm -hmm. um, for us to balance out well and to ensure that the economy doesn't suffer in the long run, what ought to be done? I think one the news that uh, the EU and the other bilateral and multilateral partners of Uganda are scaling down on their funding. Yeah. It's not news. They have been doing that for quite a time and it has been affecting us for a number of years. Since 2012-13, right. if you get the trend, uh, ODA has been going down, official development assistance, yes. and in particular grants. When you look in the budget now, it's only 5% of the budget, which is grants actually less than five now Correct. 
And uh, why they are scaling it down further, I don't know why. But They're saying uh, that um, the government just is very good at doing this on paper, but implementation is the key, and that's why they're backing off. I don't think that is a reason. All right. I think recent decision mm -hmm. by the president to cut I, or to, to, to get that deal of Kampala Jinja Expressway from the arrangement which involved the AEU, the World Bank, and the other big players mm -hmm. in that area, mm -hmm. and give the deal to, to the, the Chinese, Chinese yes. must have hit them badly. You think so? I do. I don't have doubts in my head. All right. I think that, that, that's what... Uh, but uh, I don't know whether they will be effective, because already, these days now, we are relying a lot on Chinese money. Mm -hmm. I know that it's debt. You can as well have discussed about debt, right. but as long as we are still below 50%, it's okay. these guys are saying <laughs> we still have a window. They, that fiscal space, we shall use it right. to borrow and make things happen. So if so, we're to get it right, what ought to be done, especially knowing that uh, our current you know, um, um, debt in terms of GDP to you know, um, debt ratio stands yeah. at 41.3%. Yeah, the debt has, has grown very fast in recent years. Mm -hmm. We have always been uh, saying you scale down. Uh, outsiders we are speaking like us. Now insiders are the ones speaking, including the, 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 the Secretary of the Treasury. Mm -hmm. The other day I saw him saying we must stop borrowing to do infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Recently we, were, we had a conversation at Serena here. With the, the PPP conversation? Yes. Mm -hmm. That one. Then last week we had another conversation mm -hmm. on a new model which they are trying to get. There is a professor from University of Indiana who is saying most of the infrastructure spending we've done is not efficient and it's not productive. Mm. There is need for us to now look at how do we put some money in other sectors. In this particular case, he's saying education mm -hmm. is key. Mm -hmm. yeah, we need to develop our human cap uh, capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of these conversations are coming at a time when people are beginning to see the reality of which we have been trying to show them right. that it's not sustainable for us to build an economy entirely relying on borrowing. Understood, Mr. Ramazan. There is need, Mr. Ramazan, to, there is need to, uh, indeed, identify other channels so that we don't rely on borrowing yeah. only. Now, that would bring me to my maybe final question mm -hmm. as we wrap up, Mr. Ramadan. Mm -hmm. What is the future of aviation in Uganda? We resumed August 28th. Mm -hmm. So far, so good, I believe. But then what is the future? The future right will now? depend on Ugandans, whether they have the spirit and that desire to do what government thought they would do. Because this was a sheer, stubborn nationalism. <laughs> Not business per se. That we should get back our national, you know, career after 20 years after 20 years in limbo right let us have our national pride back mm. are ugandan is ready to mm. embrace this pride that's the question thank you so you're much. not a politician <laughs> but does this have to do anything to do with the 2021 general elections president was trying to garner support for himself no by the way the bombardiers or the uganda airlines you know these days we call it the bombardier airline because they have a lot uh, of trust in bombardiers mm -hmm. was part of the annual manifesto mm -hmm. of 2016. Right. <laughs> it is in the manifesto. We are mm -hmm. going to revive the airline. And they have scored. And they have now revived it. Right. So the money is going to go. You it. see, this is point number one, I said, <laughs> and it is back here. So. Thank you so much, Mr. Ramadan Indeed. Gobi, of course, Indeed. an economist right here in the country. Always a pleasure to host Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right, so we're taking a short commercial break. Uh, speaking of the economy and numbers, we have to pay our bills as well. So let's do that, and we'll be back with so much more stimulus.